Welcome back to another edition of Jen Sports Corner. Back at you for September 12, 2024. Um, I am your host, Jen. This is my co-host, Ryan. And uh, we're here to talk about some um, Philly sports. Uh, before we get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, share all the content so people know um, when I'm dropping new vids, um, you, you stay updated on the, the latest content. And um, without further ado, let's get into... We're going to get into um, the Eagles upcoming game um, <clears throat> this week. But before we do that, I want to talk about last week's game, uh, give a brief re uh, recap and go over some of the things that really stood out to us. So um, let's start with Saquon Barkley. What did you think about the performance? Uh, what, do you, what did you think about all the, the pomp and circumstance going into the game versus what happened in the game? Um, I thought it was just a phenomenal performance on Saquon's part, considering the conditions of the field, you know, all the, you know, stuff going on in Brazil, you know, considering what everyone went through. Um, but I'd say what Saquon, Saquon put on a show, you know, he, what do you have, like 107 rushing yards. He had a touchdown, a passing touchdown from Jalen. I think he had a total of like three total touchdowns. He was just the absolute monster. He, he, he was just. It's un like it blows my mind how much better he looks in this offense compared to say a Giants offense. It doesn't surprise me, but at the same time, when you see all the weapons, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, you know you have all those weapons, and you know when in and that offensive line, so you already know that you know so the talent that Saquon has. He just. He's going to have a phenomenal year, man. He keeps us up. He stays healthy. He's going to have probably his best year in Philly, and I am very excited that he's on our he's on our uh, side. Yeah, so what do you think was the Giants' reasoning? I mean, we've all seen the video clips by now, but what do you – from your, your vantage point, what's the most rational um, reasoning you could give for why they allow Saquon to walk? I mean, maybe they were – I think maybe they were a little bit far apart on negotiations with his contract as far as, like, how much he wanted. Um, maybe he wanted a little more, and it, they felt as though it wasn't worth it, maybe based on his injury history, how much he got hurt. But, yeah. I mean, he was carrying that team on his back. Like, and that's why that man was getting hurt so much. You know, he doesn't have to worry about that in Philly, so – you know, I think that's the reason. You know, I really think it has something. Maybe it has something to do with the contract, or maybe just the fact they're just complete idiots. But I mean, nor say or I. All in all, I just think it was the contract, and maybe it has something to do. You know, he wanted a little more than they maybe thought he was worth. But hey, they're freaking idiots. I mean, look at how it paid off for us. So, right, they gave that money to. Daniel Jones, and he looked really, really bad on Sunday. Really bad. Abysmal. Abysmal. <laughs> uh, you know, he, they were getting booed going out of the stadium. It's getting really bad up there, and it's only week one. It's only going to get worse from here. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you got Malik Neighbors wasting his talents up in New York now, so, and he's, he's a very, very talented receiver, so. They're going to do the same to him. He's going to be trying to carry the team on his back, and he's going to end up getting hurt a lot, too. He already has a hamstring issue, as I saw in the injury report, because, as you know, Stan, I drafted him. Yeah, right, 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 right. So I have him in, a, in another league as well, but you look at the NFC East, look at all the money that the Giants gave to Danny Dimes. It's a waste of money that you could have given to Saquon, or if you didn't want to give it to Saquon, there were a million different ways you could have used that money, rebuild your offensive line, rebuild defense, whatever. And then you look at the Cowboys, they made Dak Prescott the highest paid, what, player in history? In, in yeah, I think, yeah, something like that. I, for, I, for, I know it was like $240 million. Yeah, so he's his cap hit is going to be, uh, I think, $60 million this year or something to that nature, $55, yeah. $60 million. And yeah. the Eagles cap hit combined for – Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Smith is about 50 to 55. So you just see how these other teams have just mismanaged their cap so bad. And then the commanders, 
they're 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 kind of turning turning it around a little bit. They got their rookie quarterback. I think he's going to be pretty good. You have Terry McLaurin, who is similar to Saquon, in my opinion. You know, people for, forget how good he is because he's had a, a who's who of quarterbacks thrown to him. So you know they, they have a little something going down there. But but all the other teams, come on, man, like the Cowboys and the Giants, a hundred million over a hundred million dollars. in one guy who's an absolute dud and then another guy who's good but he's not Pat Mahomes he's not Jalen Hurts he's not Lamar Jackson he's not Justin Herbert you, you go down the list he's good but he ain't that Mm -mm. Not at all. I mean, what is, what is he going to do? I mean, Daniel Jones, bro, like, I don't know how you can't see by now that he's not the answer. No. Not at all. Like, it's just obvious. I mean, how many – he threw th – I think he threw three picks in this past game. It was, it was atrocious. Right. Right. I mean, you know, more importantly, he, he looks spooked out in the pocket. So that's more – that would that would stand out even more than just the interceptions. It's – Even if he only only threw three today, you know more are coming because he's obviously not comfortable throwing from the pocket. So I mean, I mean, it, they played the the Vikings. Is that who they played last week? Yeah, 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 the Vikings. like, yeah, I think he threw one to Hunter Smith or somebody over the middle, and it was just like, yo, there's there's two or three people in the area, neighbors or whoever was the target. Like he's not even open. You're just winging it, man. Mm -hmm. To see it, it's, it, do, it doesn't take a, a football analyst to see that he's obviously not trusting his eyes, which I mean, it doesn't matter to me as an Eagles fan, but I mean, in general, if that's your quarterback, dude, uh, at, how do you how do you turn that around? I, I don't see a way. So, I mean, it's possible. Anything's possible, but it's sure not probable that they're going No, to turn that around. not at all, man. I mean, you, you, I, that, that point, they should have just drafted someone. Like it's, it, it's just painfully. I, I mean, even the moment they drafted him, I forget what year it was, but it, you just knew, like, based off of what I saw on the tape, what I knew, you know, knew about him, he, he was not going to be a success. And just, you know, even some analysts were questioning the pick. And, and if you got analysts questioning the pick, then, you know something's wrong there. And then, you know, look how it turned out. So, you know, we got Saquon. They, they're stuck with Danny Dimes, so. Oh, well, you know, with that being said, let's go ahead and look at uh, let's let's go ahead. I'm 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 not I'll I'll talk briefly about the Raiders. Let's let's make a, a quick segment before we move forward because um we, we played the Chargers last week and um I, I didn't expect to win that game. The Chargers are going through a lot of turnover in, in on that roster, just about as much turnover as we've seen with the Buffalo Bills. So the Bills have a whole new receiving core. And so do the Chargers for most purposes. You have Quentin Johnson from last year, the, the first round rookie who they're hoping, you know, turns it around like Jameson, you know, Jameson Williams or Williamson. Yeah, yeah, Jam yeah, Jameson Williamson. Jameson Williamson from, from the Lions. He, he came out with a bang this year. Uh, Quentin Johnson, not so much. So you have McConley. That's the rookie from this year. I think their first round pick. He got all the targets. Joshua Palmer. We we sh I, I think we double teamed him and we we took Josh Palmer out the game. So I guess he's their de facto number one right now. But he's I, I know what Josh Palmer is. Like he cool. But like um, the other rookie, I think Connolly. He he he's going to be one of the guys. But they don't. They really didn't have a lot of weapons, and we struggled against them. And uh, we don't really have a running game. We let Josh Jacobs go in the offseason. And you have Zamir White. I mean, cool. Um, Madison, cool from the Vikings. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you got He's not just he's not Jacobs. <laughs> no, man, he's not. I mean, look, we lost 22 to 10. Because you have the Gardner Minshew, he's solid. He's going to manage the game for you. But he's against tougher teams. And the Chargers, you see, I think Harbaugh is the new coach, right? Yeah. 
they he has his, his fingerprints all over the defense. They they were flying around and we really didn't have any freaking answers for them yesterday. Minshew, he did, he did, he did good. Like he wasn't bad. Like 25 for 33, 257 yards, a touchdown and an interception. But yo, no run game. And you're once they take Devontae Adams out the game, they ain't nobody else. Ain't nobody else, man. Like that that's it. Yeah. So I mean, we kind of know. I'm going to start reacting to some of the games. I hope that Brock Bowers is able to, you know, progress and, and make an impact as a rookie. But beyond that, there's there's no weapons on that team. Defensively, we're a young defense trying to find our identity. But, you know, that's going to take time. But we know what I think as Raiders fans, if you're being honest and objective with yourselves, um, this is one of those growing years, kind of like Andy Reid's first year with the Eagles in 99. Like you have some pieces, but you still have some gaps to fill and you have to grow and find your, you have to find the identity. You have to embody the the identity that Antonio Pierce has as a coach. Yeah. Like you, you got a taste of it last year near the end and it was a great time, you know, rah, rah, you know, to finish the season out. But like now is the, the year where you really start to, you know, get your ass in gear and the guys that are going to be part of the future Three years from now, they stand out, and the ones that aren't, they get weeded out now. That this is that type of year, so um, they there's really nothing to add to that. I mean, unless you do, because I mean, we're playing the Ravens this weekend, um, so <laughs> yeah. Well, they they're probably mad because they just lost to the Chiefs. So I I feel bad for y'all. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> okay, no, um, no. though. I, I hope they win. I hope they upset them because you know. Yeah, I mean, listen, listen. Um, we have to, we have to. I, I have to really look at film and see what our line looks like and what our run game looks like. Because if we can't establish any type of leads and and allow Max Crosby to pin his ears back and get after some of these guys, it's it's, it's you know you know what time it is. So I mean, is the defense even any good? Like, is there any good pieces outside of um, Max Crosby on that defense? Um, Christian, uh, Wilkerson, who we got from the Dolphins. So mm -hmm. he's supposed to, you know, really give us that run stuff and presses up the middle, but dude, we gave yeah, JK Dobbins 10 carries for 135 yards and a touchdown, man. Like, you, you, like, come on, dog. Yeah. I mean, Derrick Henry, I hate to say it for y'all, but I think he's going to eat. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I mean, they're better than the Chargers. So we didn't do well against the Chargers. And we see them twice a year, and they didn't really change. They got they stayed the same, albeit got worse, and they still were able to beat us pretty convincingly. Um, yeah. Like we were tied at halftime. It was actually a pretty pretty good game, and in the second half, they just they kicked it into gear, and we just it, it, they just left us, man. Yeah, we were up seven six at halftime, and we lost twenty two to ten. So it was clearly pretty clear that whatever they found on film, they they just Maybe they were like, "Yeah, we're just gonna run the ball." I don't, I don't know, man. But it's a uh, shame, man. I, I feel for y'all because, like, y'all had y'all one time were were like a Super Bowl contending team until their car went down. It's like, when are you guys gonna get a break? Like, I mean, they need to draft. I mean, listen, I, Gardner Minshew is solid. He's not bad, but yeah, I yeah. think y'all need to draft somebody seriously. We we do we do and I, I wanted the that guy that went to the Falcons they they drafted him one or two picks before us and people were on them because they were like hey you guys just signed Kirk Cousins why are you going to draft the rookie in the first round pick you just gave Kirk Cousins uh like a, a billion dollars for the for the 40th time <laughs> um, yeah. so we didn't get him so yeah we should look for a quarterback next year. Um, right now, I need to make a video looking at our cap situation because right now it's a year for building and, and then seeing what free agents are out there in the off season and then using that money to go get them. Cause we spent some money on Wilkerson, but I don't think by any means that we blew our budget on a lot of other pieces. So, um, you, you have, you need to address the offensive line. Um, mm -hmm. Start from there, because as long as you have Devontae Adams, if you get a rookie quarter quarterback and just get a tackle, 
preferably a left tackle on the offseason, that's where you start. Wherever you're weak at, because I think we have uh Colton. Um Col Colton uh, can never I ne can never Colt get McCoy? No, 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 no. Um, hold on. I that's need to good. I need to look up the the depth chart now. It's gonna bother me now. Um left tackle. I wonder if he's still our left tackle of the future. He's um He's supposed to be a main piece for us on the on the line. Um, so left tackle, yeah, Colton Miller. Colton Miller is our mainstay. And oh, okay. uh Cody Whitehair, we signed him. Yeah, we signed him to be a starter for us. Uh I believe Andre Andre James is another starter, but beyond that on the right side, I don't really know. I don't know. Right. Um so I think if they go out and get a right tackle, like a star, if they don't already have one, I don't think Munford is, then I think that we can do some things because we have the, the weapons. You have Devontae Adams and Brock Bowers. You're going to have the pieces. And so you just draft a quarterback high and then sign a running back if you can, like whether it's free agency because you have the money or um, in the draft. But I, I, I think that we're not far off. It's just going to be a year from now, like, like right. the under under Reed. I don't think we're really as far off as people think. So Raiders fans, I know that was a I was rambling a little bit going on the rant, but I don't really think we're that far off. But it really it comes down yeah. to making well intentioned moves in the offseason to build upon what you have. Because this can either be a, a one or two year window if you if you flub it up or it could be a five year window if you uh put the right pieces around uh this core in the offseason. Yeah for sure. Because, you know, you got Devontae Adams, who's, um, you know, he's not getting any younger. You know, his talent's going to go to waste if they don't, you know, do something soon, you know. He's he's a hell of a receiver, so it's something that they really need to take care of and get this team rolling, man. But it's like, I don't think they're that far off either. It's just all about making the right moves and addressing them up properly. Exactly, exactly. Um, so let's go ahead. Let, let us know what your thoughts are on the Eagles and the Raiders. Um, coming up, the um, the Eagles are playing the Falcons. Um, that's a Monday night game, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. So we are Monday night playing the Falcons. And look, I mean, um, Falcons is that's an interesting squad, a lot of moving moves in the all season. Tell me what you think about Kirk Cousins, the money they gave him, and then what you saw in week one out of him in the passing game. It's, he's no good, so. <laughs> okay. That's a pretty. <laughs> I mean, he's just, I don't know, man. Like, maybe he needs time. Like, he's just, like, in prime, he, we all know what he can do in prime time. So I'm not worried about him in prime time, but. I just think maybe in these time with the offense. I mean, you still you got pieces there. You got Drake London. You got Bajon Robinson. I mean, you got pieces to help you succeed. But are you gonna do what you've been doing the past couple of years with the Vikings? You know, getting their hopes up, maybe taking them to the playoffs. Or are you just gonna be trashed the whole entire year because you can't get acclimated to the offense? We'll see, but. I, I think he can get better. You know, it's like you say, it's week one. You know, let's see what happens. Yeah, I, I think they'll be better this week. I think that first week, look, as with – this is just – and we talked about this off camera. They don't play the starters in the preseason games, and then everybody's rusty in week one. Hell, even week two. I, I mean, it's a tale as old as time. Even, even when we had four preseason games – the starters played one, maybe two games, and even then you had a lot of sloppy play in the first two weeks. And now it's just amplified um, because nobody's playing in the first – in the preseason games. So we saw that with the Eagles, and, you know, we saw that with the Falcons, I think. It, it, you throw the rustiness on top of coming off of, I think, was it the torn Achilles? Mm -hmm. All right, so – and now you have – you have a new team. So they have a new offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith, horrible coordinator. 
They had Kyle Pitts, I think, one of the premier talents in the game, and they refused to throw the ball to him like they were just brain dead. So this year they're doing the act, the opposite. They're actually targeting him. And so you got you have to worry about him. You have to worry about Drake London. You have to worry about Bijan Robinson. But the main focal point or the limiting factor is Kirk Cousins because he has real bad happy feet. He has a real bad case of happy feet in that pocket from what we saw in week one. And the Eagles defense actually played pretty well last week. They got burned a couple of times, particularly when Jordan Love was able to break contain in the pocket, whether that was going outside the tackle or whether that was going um, between the tackle and the guard, you know, waiting for the end to go upfield and then finding a, a running lane. And then throwing a pass to, I think, Dobbs or whoever it was for a 70-yard touchdown or a, a big play of some sort. When you don't mm -hmm. have that big playability that you have to worry about, well, it changes the way – your defense plays, it changes the way, the timing for when the DBs are jumping routes. It changes the uh, the pass rush um, assignments for the ends. And mm -hmm. they're going to collapse the pocket. Come on. Nobody is is blocking Jalen Carter. We saw – we I knew that from last year. Uh, maybe a lot of people were sleepwalking or not paying attention, but we knew that mm -hmm. coming this year, and he did it in game one. And he's going to do it in game two, and he's going to collapse that pocket on Kirk Cousins. And if if it's, if this game is going to be anything like what we saw in week one, that dude's going to fold like a lawn chair, man. Oh, man. Now you have now you have ball hawks back there. You have ball hawk hawks, and you seen what Queen Yon Mitchell did. Yeah, he had some rookie moments, but overall, mm -hmm. he's he's in the receiver's hip pocket. He's batting down passes like he's like stick them. Like like on these guys like flies on doo doo like he's right there man he's only and he's only going to get better and then you have Slay playing at a high level and 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 and, and again like people are down on Slay I look at him and I'm, and I'm like listen <sighs> he's going to have to make sure he takes care of the soft tissue injuries and 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 keep his body healthy but athleticism wise like if you guys think that he's it's still not a burner. You guys are freaking tripping. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what people are losing sight of. They just, they, they see the age and in their mind, they're just like automatically loses one to two tenths of a second. And I'm like, you have to confirm with the play on the field, not just with the perception that you created in your head because you reached a certain age that tends to be where cornerbacks drop off at. No, like, Everything is a case by case basis. Does he fall into the um into the uh the big part of the bell curve, or is he more towards uh one of the outlier ends, either really really bad like we saw with James Bradbury where he fell off a cliff, or really really good where he's just one of those guys who has a step to lose and he's still going to be playing at a high level. It seems mm -hmm. to be the latter, like I just said. So. Look, they, they got ball hawks. You're going to have Slay on Drake London. And, and hell, you can even have Quinion Mitchell shadow Drake London. Hell, you can have Quinion Mitchell um, on Drake London and have Slay on Kyle Pitts or vice versa. Like, you have so many mm -hmm. ways to take away what they like to do best and force them to work through Bijan and really stack guys in the box. Mm -hmm. And and you can make it really, really difficult for them very, very quick, especially with a quarterback who's skittish back there because he's getting his sea legs back. Mm -hmm. so I, I'm picking them to win the game, but this Atlanta Falcons Falcons team is a live wire. They're they're a live team. Yeah. Their, their defense is a little bit underrated. They're not going to be superstars by any stretch of the imagination, but they have the talent to be maybe a a top 10 defense, maybe like eighth or ninth. They have, oh, yeah. they have A.J. Terrell at cornerback. He's not the creme de la creme, but he's still a guy that they shadow the opposing team's number one receiver with week by week. So they, they have some pieces on defense. So they're a team that has a really potentially explosive offense and a good – an above average to very good defense. So as long as we run the ball, control clock, and um, get the one-on-one -on -one matchups, um, A.J. Brown should still cook A.J. Terrell just like he did uh, Jair Alexander. We'll, we'll be fine. 
Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, hopefully they they execute, play to their strengths, and they should walk out of the link with a dub. So what's your uh, final thoughts on that? On the game? I really, I definitely think we're going to, um, I definitely think we're going to get the dub. And, you know, like I said before, Kirk Cousins isn't very good in prime time. Um, like I said, I ain't sleeping on him, but um, I feel like we're gonna get the dub. You know, I, I like um what I've been seeing from Quenyon. You know, I, I feel like he, considering what he is, he's a rookie. Um, but he really showed me some things on that Friday game. So he, I really think he's gonna be a you know, he's gonna be a factor in that game. You can put him anywhere. I think he's still gonna play. Well, he's gonna have his moments, of course, but. I really I feel good about this game. You know, the um like you said, the Falcons are a little bit underrated on defense. I think they have some decent uh DBs. You know, they got some players on that squad, man. So it should be I think they're gonna come to play. You know, we, we should um I hope they're not sleeping on them, which I don't think they are, but you know, I think I think it's gonna be an interesting game, but I do think think we'll come out with the W. Absolutely. Uh let us know what you guys think in the comments about the Eagles Falcon on Falcons game on prime time Monday night football and then let us know what you think about um who's going to win the game between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Baltimore Ravens as well so um that's it for football um let, we're going to end off with some baseball you know Phillies um uh, put the word back that we we back up best record in baseball again 88 wins I mean listen um through all the turmoil, they're, they're still finding ways to get it done, and they're getting some critical wins down the stretch. They just completed a three-game uh, sweep of the uh, Tampa Bay Rays um, to, again, like I said, take the number one spot in baseball. Uh, what did you think about the series? You know, we'll, we'll get to the theatrics as well, but what do you think about the series? What do you think about Castellanos with the big hits? Uh and especially uh, Kyle Schwarber making history with um, the most leadoff home runs in a season in uh, MLB history. Yeah, um, I haven't really seen much of baseball. I haven't been – I've been following it, but I haven't had really time to watch it. But um, it's definitely impressive. You know, Kyle Schwarber has always been a big-time hitter. Um, you know, he has the slumps, but he's – He's known to hit that ball out of park, man. You know, you, you saw what he did in the postseason. You know, he's – um, it's impressive. And, you know, Castellanos too, man. Like, you know, hopefully we can, you know, get to where we want to be this year. You know, I'm not worried about the best record in baseball. I'm worried about getting that pennant, bro. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, What, what do you think about – now, I, I, I didn't look at the – I think the first or second game when it happened – but um, and I don't know why you say to hit Castellanos because he hit him again in the third mm -hmm. game as well. He hit him again after the bench clearing brawl on I think it was Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Um, so what what I'll give you my thoughts on the unwritten rule in baseball about you know hitting batters and whatnot. But what was your take from that whole situation? You know, Bryce Harper running out and 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 getting heated and, and everybody clearing the benches and stuff. I mean, I thought that whole thing could have been completely avoided, but it's I mean, truthfully, I thought the whole thing was a little ridiculous, but it and you know it's things happen in the sport of baseball, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um I didn't, so, see, I didn't, I didn't see the whole, what exactly happened. It was you said. So you say the so he ended up hitting Castellanos and Bryce Harper was on second base, I believe, first or second or whatever, and he ran up to the mound to get in. You say his face, and then both benches cleared. And um, see, I didn't see the game. I just saw the you know clips about it and whatnot, but um. I don't know why they were going after Cassidy because he got hit again today, but here, here's the thing. I, I think that he was getting hit around in that game and maybe he got frustrated. So this is uh, a tie-breaking. So the game was tied. So it said Yuseida had surrendered a tie-breaking two-run double earlier in the inning to pinch hitter Kyle Stevenson and gave up 
um, an RBI single to Buddy Kennedy, then a two-run homer to Trey Turner. I remember seeing that highlight. And then Look. Bryce Harper hit a double, and then Castellanos came up, so they were lighting this dude up in that inning. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I, I – so you say it was saying that he was trying to throw a changeup, but he hit him with a 96-mile-an-hour fastball on the hip, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, he was saying he didn't do it on purpose. The Phillies didn't believe him. I, I, somebody correct me if I'm mistaken, but um, th there were some tensions going into that beforehand. I don't know if people were like dusting batters off the plate before that. I don't know what the case was, but um, Cassiano's response to that was like he said the Phillies didn't believe him. Um, he's he said Cassiano said you're frustrated and you're going to throw at somebody. He said, that's like my two-year-old throwing a fit because I took away his dessert before he was finished. And then Bryce right. said, what happened has no place in baseball. He said, that's not the way we play the game. It shouldn't be. Guys throw too yeah. hard nowadays. You're getting mad because a guy hits a home off of you and you blow the lead or you blow the lead and then you walk the guy and uh, come out of the game. And, right. and he said, just walk the guy and come out of the game if you get mad that somebody hit a home or you blew the lead. Like, why are you throwing at people? Um, they just mm -hmm. believe that he did it unintentionally. Right. Um, so yeah. so he got suspended for three games because of that. Um That's so, well. So here's my take. And look, I, I pitched I, I was a pretty good pitcher as a kid in um little league baseball. Um I didn't didn't get a chance to pitch in high school, but I certainly hit against, you know, some pretty decent uh level pitchers when we play like Lennon P and some of the bigger high schools in South Jersey. So uh but even when I was a kid, like I, I was uh I would compete against all the all the people in the area. Camden, you know, Haddonfield, Magnolia, blah, blah, blah. I was I was throwing very, very hard. And mm -hmm. I didn't get hit often, but when I did, you know, if I was playing Camden and you were playing some of the best kids in the in the inner city. They would get hits off of you, and sometimes mm -hmm. defense wouldn't be good, or the kids that were playing defense weren't that great. You know, things happen, but mm -hmm. even when I got frustrated, I never felt the need to want to hit somebody. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's very childish, and this is this is my opinion. You know, some some uh, baseball players and historians and aficionados may disagree with me, but so be it. Um, throwing at some throwing a baseball at somebody is cowardly, and I say that because there's really oh, yeah. not a lot, a whole lot that the offense can do to retaliate against you. Like if you put out a bounty in football, well, somebody can come after your quarterback too. Mm -hmm. Somebody can actually get physical with you on the field, right? So yeah. if you come and try to hit the quarterback with a dirty hit, well, guess what? You might get a chop block by an offensive lineman later on. They'll take the penalty to send a message to you. Like there's you 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 tend to see a lot less of it because you know that there are physical repercussions for being a dickhead. But mm -hmm. for some reason in baseball, we have grown men get upset that somebody does a celebration or somebody flips the bat or somebody stares at them when they go around the base. It's like, oh fucking well. Like take get your get the stick out of your fucking ass and be a grown man. And just go out and strike the next person out or go get them the next time around. Like how much of a fucking pussy do you have to be to get so worked up that you feel like you have to throw a 90 plus mile an hour fastball at somebody's head, um, God forbid, or, or anywhere really. Um, yeah. because you know that the odds of them being able, to, being able to hit a ball straight at you are very, very low compared to the odds of you being being able to hit them at any point in time and that at bat. It's a very cowardly yeah. way of going about things. Because yeah. if you knew that there was a 50% chance of somebody being able to retaliate by hitting, by beaming the ball right back straight at you, I bet you you see a lot less people doing that dumb shit. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, if you knew I could aim the ball back at your head with the baseball bat, you know, crack that baseball right back at you, at your face, and take your draw off. You wouldn't be so fucking cocky back there because you 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 had this uh, feeling of immunity. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's some people may say, oh, you never played, you know, the game with, at a major league level. Should it matter? This is just uh, mm -hmm. basic common sense. It doesn't matter yeah. what you're doing in life. Take some pride in what you do. Um, 
if you could if you can dish it out, if you celebrate after a strikeout or you get happy after you, you strike somebody out or you get paid to strike people out for a living, well, guess what? Sometimes people are going to get the best at you. Grow the fuck up. Rant yeah. A hundred percent, bro. I mean, throw like you said, throwing a ball at someone intentionally over, you know, a possible celebration or what, what say you like, it's, it's dumb. You know, you, you're at that point, you're in high school, you're mad, get over it. Like, I just don't understand why someone throws a ball at someone intentionally. And it's just like, I was looking at the article while you were talking about that. And it says right here, Cassianos knew that ball was coming. He knew he had a feeling he was going to get hit. Yeah. And it's, you know, he had an overwhelmingly sense he was going to get hit. So it's, and just for him to even feel that way and feel uncomfortable, it's, that's not professional in baseball on the guy who hit him at all. I agree, man. Um, so that being said, um, I think we could take some really good lessons out of that game about keeping our composure. And at the end of the day, they intentional or not, that was a moment, but we still won the war, brought the brooms out, got some critical wins and um, reestablished dominance in the, in the league. And we have to stay consistent going through September, um, winding things, things down, but, you know, Kyle Schwarber, hyperextended elbow, trying to slide back into first base so listen, man, um, they're going to have to find, and I, next episode, next serious sit down episode we're going to have is talking about, is it really the best strategy to have Kyle Schwarber as the leadoff hitter as we're on the eve of him setting a baseball record for the most leadoff home runs in MLB history, right? So that'll be the next topic. So mm -hmm. that's, that's it for this one. Um, let us know what you think. Um, let us know um, what do you think about the the Phillies and the injuries going on the stretch, obviously, with Kyle Schwarber, um, you know, the big incident with uh, Useda hitting Castellanos and um, how you think the Phillies came out of that game with Zach Wheeler pitching an absolute gem. Um, I don't need to go into five minutes explaining how good he was, that he was just on fire, man. He gave up a home run or two, but beyond that, man, lights out. So um, that's it for this episode. Um, I'm your your host, Jen. This is my co-host, Ryan, and we're going to catch you on the next one, man. Peace.